Hi, I'm Liz. People come to Havana looking for the real Cuba. And this is what they do. But this is not my Cuba. My Cuba isn't so romantic, but I'm happy here. I love my country. Cuba is safe. We've got free healthcare and education. I graduated from university without paying a penny, and I became a journalist. Pero lo mejor que tiene Cuba es su gente. But we've got one huge problem: the economy. La situación está mala. Malísima. Fea, fea. Pésimamente mal. Está difícil. Estresante. Caótica. En Tambela. Ahora mismo está fatal. A mí ni me pregunto. <laughs> During the pandemic, people have to wait in line for hours just to buy food. Aquí la cosa está dura. COVID. I'm used to this. I grew up in crisis. Y no es embargo ni bloqueo. The legislation I signed today further tightens that embargo. By maintaining our embargo, el bloqueo económico persiste. Cruel e insensato bloqueo que haya existido contra nación. Our government blames pretty much everything on the U.S. embargo. They call it the blockade. Es que lo queman mucho. We get bored of hearing about the blockade all the time, but it's real. The United States has been waging war against Cuba for 60 years. It's not a war with bullets or bombs, but it touches every aspect of our lives, recently more than ever. ¿Cómo está Ernesto? Buenos días. ¿Está listo para trabajar en el campo sí, hoy? Sí, no, voy a trabajar ahora. Hay personas que me conocen de 25 años y no saben que me faltan las piernas. ¿Me puede mostrar sus prótesis? Sí, cómo no. Estas son de aluminio y fibra de plástico. No tienen ni articulación, son rígidas. Y se puede partir por aquí. Y entonces la parte del pie se puede partir también una vez por aquí cargando un saco de yuca se me partió por aquí porque a mi hija ya te digo que cuando esto se rompe es un problema This is where Ernesto goes to get his prosthetics free of charge but Ernesto can't get the specialized prosthetics he needs because it's illegal for Cuba to buy them Y existen unas prótesis un poco más resistentes que usted le pudieran sí, servir existen, más Existen unas prótesis más resistentes con más calidad caminaría mejor, incluso podía trabajar mucho más, pero no tenemos acceso a ella por el bloqueo. Ernesto doesn't complain. In Cuba, we've lived with scarcity for so many years, we take it for granted. The blockade is the longest trade embargo in modern history. It isn't motivated by concerns about human rights. It's about money and power. Until 1959, Cuba was like a U.S. colony. Our economy was controlled by U.S. companies, corrupt politicians, and the mafia. After the revolution, Cuba nationalized the U.S. companies. We claim our sovereignty, our right to govern ourselves. The government gave basic rights to the majority. Women, black people, campesinos, the working class. The blockade was retaliation. It's basically a form of economic warfare. The blockade stops Cuba from doing business with the United States. They can't buy our stuff and we can't buy theirs. And we can pay for things because banks won't lend us money or even let us open accounts. The blockade also stops Cuba from doing business with other countries. That's not all. The blockade also locks us up of a big part of the internet. We are used to getting bad news from the United States. But five years ago, llegaron por primera vez buenas noticias de la Casa Blanca. It does not serve America's interests or the Cuban people to try to push Cuba towards collapse. Que volar.
Obama announced new relations with Cuba. He began by loosening the blockade. U.S. airlines and cruise ships started taking tourists to Havana. Business was booming. Clandestina became Cuba's first independent design store in 2015. Idania is Clandestina's co-founder. She started the store after Cuba opened its economy to private business. Clandestina pretende establecer el trabajo de los jóvenes diseñadores cubanos. After Idania met Obama, Clandestina became a symbol of Cuba's new private sector. Havana was like overcrowded, celebrities, musicians, politicians, everybody. It was insane. Chanel runway, Fast and the Furious shooting, Hola, Rolling Stone concert. The mood was anything is possible, all this sense of change, and finally to be aware of I have a future here. I can stay here, I don't have to leave my country. But Uh, then Trump won the election, so... But all of the concessions that Barack Obama has granted the Castro regime were done through executive order, which means the next president can reverse them, and that I will do. The Trump administration is imposing new restrictions on U.S. travel to Cuba. John Bolton making a South Florida stop today to talk to the Cuban-American community. Unveiling sweeping changes to Cuba policy. A major blow to the new U.S.-Cuba relationship. The U.S. has banned flights. All families to leave Cuba. The U.S. government will also ban trips by cruise ships. We'll have to go after their finances. Limiting the amount of money. Fresh U.S. sanctions. It's part of a trend. U.S. tourism stopped. And if you don't have tourism, you don't have business. No tourism, zero remittances, no trade at all. You are suffocating the private sector. You are suffocating the Cuban people. Since COVID, things have gone from bad to worse. Tiene ibuprofeno por casualidad? No, mami, yo estoy en baja. ¿Y guafarina? Tampoco. ¿Y mefomina? Tampoco. ¿Y nalapil? Yo estoy en baja. You'd think the U.S. might loosen the embargo during a pandemic. No. Recently, two Swiss companies refused to sell Cuba ventilators because they were owned by a larger U.S. company. And a U.S.-owned airline wouldn't take a donation of masks and ventilators to Cuba. On top of all that, the Trump administration made it even harder for our family members in the U.S. to send us money. The Trump administration has killed a deal that would allow Cuban baseball players to play for Major League Baseball. El bloqueo afecta hasta nuestro deporte nacional. Sian Vega is one of Cuba's top young baseball prospects. Desde chiquito siempre mi papá me inculcó entrenar, me daba todos los días la pelota. Empecé a ver mi talento a partir de los 13, 14 años. Hay ya bastantes peloteros cubanos en la MLB que se han formado aquí en Cuba. Representar a mi país en el más alto nivel, eh, que es la MLB, sería mi sueño, la verdad. Trump cuando nos cerró las puertas de firmar con la MLB, todo, casi todos los peloteros se sintieron mal por esa noticia. Claro, porque ahora, para, en caso de que tú quisieras jugar con la MLB, tendrías que renunciar. Tendría que renunciar a mi país y no me gustaría, la verdad. Me gustaría jugar y volver a mi país, vivir con mi familia, no estar lejos de ella. For his rivals tonight just might be the last big chance to stop Donald Trump. It's hard to believe now, but five years ago, some Cubans thought a Trump presidency wouldn't be that bad. Si me tuviera que escoger, yo escogería Donald Trump. Y sabe que Cuba tiene un mercado virgen. Y él le interesaría mucho invertir en Cuba. No sé, no creo que todo ese proceso que ha ocurrido lo eche para atrás. That same month, Trump's executives were visiting Cuba and playing golf here. It wasn't the first time Trump tried to do business in Cuba. This is the website for La Oficina Cubana de Propiedad Industrial. It's where foreign companies apply to do business in Cuba. In 2008, Trump registered his brand name for hotels, casinos, beauty contests, television programs, and golf courses. 
I'm okay with the Cuba situation, but I want to tell you they should be making a good deal. So what or who made Trump change his position on Cuba? Guys, we have a con artist as the front runner in the Republican Party. Thank God he has really large ears, the biggest ears I've ever seen. And you know what they say about men with small hands? Rubio, total lightweight. If he hadn't inherited $200 million, you know where Donald no, no, Trump no, would no, be no. right now? No, no, Selling no. watches in I Manhattan. Trump's fight with Rubio didn't last long. A man that's really become a friend of mine, Senator Marco Rubio. Great guy. After Trump won, they became allies. Trump let Rubio pick his Latin American team, and Rubio wrote Trump's new Cuba policy. I have wonderful memories from our visit during the campaign. I was right before the election. I guess it worked, right? Trump's war in Cuba has won him the support of powerful Cuban American businessmen and politicians like Marco Rubio. They helped him win Florida, the country's biggest swing state, in 2016. And Trump believes this is the way to win again in 2020. I'm Cuban and support Trump. I am so thrilled to be back here with all of my friends in Little Havana. When U.S. presidents say they are talking to the Cuban people, they're not talking to us because we don't get to vote in Florida. Pero los cubanos no cogemos lucha con la política de los Estados Unidos. El bloqueo está ahí y punto. Así que para adelante que no hay más nada. Thank you.